And here they are, as mentioned, Philip going first. Uh, uh, gonna set up his uh, field if he doesn't know what he's up against uh, obviously prioritizing uh, maybe the red but I do see a swap frog and a starter which makes this end really strong uh, and we know how good totally awesome can be and already swap frog coming down uh, is there gonna be a dimension Ooh. shifter <laughs> there is shifter already from Emre wow once again, Shifter uh, being activated after uh, Federico in the previous yeah. match. Uh, but this end uh, is nonetheless really, really strong. Uh, we know that, uh, for example, Philip himself is siding Dimension Shifter uh, for the matchup, uh, which, of course, is something you don't want to see when you open Swap. But it's still uh, far from over, uh, and uh, he's gonna set up a really strong field, uh, possibly with uh, uh, carrot and red, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this shifter here is good, of course, on the swap frog itself, but as you said, uh, we have seen Sprite uh, playing uh, with Dimension Shifter either on the main deck or side deck, depending on the version of it. He plays very well under the shifter. You don't really need to play with the graveyard as before. Just, you know, the swap frog is yeah. relevant with the totally awesome. But. And here we see the car. Uh, I do like this line. Essentially, you end up with a starter face down. So what you can do is wait uh, for uh, a dark ruler or mine and then flip it to get to the red, which is obviously the better card against uh, uh, Flowandries. Uh, which I would say in game one, uh, you pretty much guess uh, it's gonna happen. Yeah. And I also really like this play with the Gene Buster. So solid stuff uh, by Philip. And let's see if this opening will be enough uh, or if Emre picks up some of these uh, going second cards like Dark Ruler, Mystic Mine or Lightning Storm. And oh, it's Prosperity, great okay. way to start. Because now if he gets to see the either uh, Lightning Storm or Dark Ruler, I yeah, mean. it's tough. Yeah. Do you even uh, negate this with the carrot? What do you think, or do you just? Uh, this is allow risky. It? This is risky, actually. But uh, I think I will wait, honestly. Yeah, you probably have to wait. And this is what's gonna happen now. Let's take a look at these six cards. Uh, and here is the dark ruler already from Emre, which could be huge. Uh, yeah, I think uh, it's definitely one of the picks, uh, but uh, we all depends if he already has access to the Flow Wonder yep. engine. He does, uh, so he picks up this main deck, Dark Ruler, and I think uh, it's gonna be really good, but at the same time, it's well played by Philip to keep the starter for the red, uh, so it's not obvious that it will be enough. Uh, here, I would really like to see it uh, being used on the red. Uh, he can technically wait, but he's gonna flip it right away as expected, summoning the red from the deck. Yeah, there's no actually need to wait, otherwise yeah. this is the better move. I think uh, both uh, playing really well, uh, something you would expect. Uh, uh, you don't go 7-1 uh, just uh, with luck uh, at an event of this caliber. And uh, let's see if Emre has uh, any other solution. Uh, uh, the interruptions from Philip might be over, but he's also main decking uh, Ash Blossom. So if he's holding a copy in the end, that can be activated even if Shifter resolve. Let's see. Again, one of the best cards would be the map. If he has it, because that's an easy way to get to some interruptions and play around the red. Yeah, Emre really, really considering his options here. Doesn't want to mess up, especially when playing on stream. Ooh, <laughs> and the Mystic Mine coming down from Emre. Okay, that's how this one is gonna go. And uh, I can already tell you, Philip, uh, one out uh, is the Sprite Smashers. Uh, yeah. He passes right back, and uh, this is already very tough uh, for Philip. Uh, wow. And uh, what we will be seeing most likely is uh, as soon as Emre gets his place on the line, uh, uh, 
basically Mystic Mine acts, uh, let's say, as a pseudo helper for you, yeah. just to put, you know, your cards on the line as soon as you have them. But to be fair, like uh, when your opponent has four monsters, Mystic Mine gets much, much better. Yeah. Usually, what you see is uh, you try to get rid of your board to limit your opponent. But as soon as Emre gets uh, even just a Robina, yeah. this game uh, is really tough uh, for uh, Philip. Wow. Ooh. And he, he wants to deck out his opponent, but I think this is absolutely madness. Because uh, you know that they play one copy of Smashers. Wow, I'm really interested in this strategy from Emery here. So it sets a face down card, but like there is no way he no. thinks uh, you I can mean, deck him out. Yeah, I'm very sceptic about this. Do uh, you think he's forgetting about it? But how can you really forget about such a card? Like, maybe he's thinking he doesn't have anything in Grave, but he can just link Summon yeah. and then it's it's easy. So, I don't know. This is uh, definitely not something uh, I would expect. Uh, maybe he has another copy of Empen uh, and he's just uh, uh, trying his uh, luck, but... The thing is that as soon as Philip gets to see the Smasher... Yeah, he can push uh, for game. I don't really see why Emre is uh, sticking to this plan, honestly, because he, he will not pay off. Yeah, I mean, unless he's getting really... No, he now discards the Robina, so now I'm getting actually a little bit confused about the idea from Emre, because as soon as you... I mean, pretty much what we mentioned, like, with players such as Diego was that, yeah, Mystic Mine is a great card in the deck, uh, but it is so great because you don't have to rely on decking out your opponent. Yeah. Uh, but you have these cute plays with Raidza uh, where you can keep on accumulating resources, but this is not a plan. So I don't know. I definitely am a little skeptic here about uh, the line from Emre, who just takes another duality. So he's looking for something specifically. But honestly, I can't quite uh, figure it out. Because he already had the Rubina and uh, the Ampen, so it's not like you can wish for much more. And uh, every, pretty much every turn you wait, you just risk your opponent yeah. uh, destroying you. Wow. I mean, let's see, maybe it is the last card in the deck and he gets uh, rewarded by this uh, very bold uh, decision. As mentioned, the Emre, uh, really old-fashioned player, has been playing the game forever and uh, on and off uh, and at least 10 plus years of experience. Uh, so he's used to these grind uh, scenarios. Uh, Probably his comfort zone, we could say. Uh, can't quite tell about uh, his opponent. And now we get to see actually Emre pulling the trigger and doing it by getting rid of Mystic Mine. Why? Yeah, okay. You get to use the Lightning Storm. We don't see Carrot being activated, which again is... A little un unusual, I would say. But now, um, again, one decision from Philip is whether he wants to activate his carrot. We know there is an Ash Blossom in hand. Still, I would have left the Mystic Mine. Uh, yeah, of course, if you want to use the Storm, you can opt because you have a face up card. Yeah. But. If you're using it on monsters, Mystic Mind shuts them down. And this is what we are seeing. I think uh, it just activated the, the carrot to negate the effect of the field spell. And now play is back to Emre, who has uh, pretty much uh, a lot of options. Uh, he goes for duality. Trying to figure out what Emre plan is. Because he, he got rid of the eagle and then uh, 
the Rubin as well a couple of turns ago. And here we see an impermanence, uh, which is a big punish. I was thinking you always Ash Blossom this. Yeah. But now he goes for the Ash, uh, which, uh, by the way, is not that great, because uh, 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 you still get to resolve the Robina. So that's why I think the order wasn't the best. Uh, I think you always go for the Ash Blossom, because they don't have any other uh, uh, flow under is banished. Yeah. Yep. And now they are just uh, resolving uh, the Robina. Again, a lot of uh, possible options. Uh, you can get to the three plus the Tucan to get things going, which is uh, one. But as we have seen from Diego, yeah, this is probably the line. So he goes for this three as expected. Uh, you can use it to banish the Empen and then uh, trigger its effect later on. And yeah, he goes for this three. Let's see if he wants to chain the Robina. He does. Uh, And I think Emre here could potentially push enough. Let's see. So, surprisingly, already he goes for the three. Plus, the Tucan already in hand. Uh, doesn't seem like he activated the Robina right away, but he will be able to get this back. Uh, not interested in the Robina. And he's just gonna tribute for Empen, maybe? Yeah. It is Empen, so Empen activates. Uh, and I think his opponent has seen enough and after a quite uh, unusual game one, I want to say, it is Emre who takes the lead in this final match of day one. What an opening to this final duel. Uh, Shifter plus Mystic Mine and Dark Luler was a uh, probably dream end yeah. from Emre. But then it got really weird somehow, because we were thinking about uh, what is the option, what is the out, the out was the one smashes. Uh, and if at any point, and I think we had like six, seven turns maybe, yeah. uh, his opponent would have picked it up, I think the game was over yeah, that, on the that spot. That would have been basically like I don't know. gone. But. I am a little skeptic about the whole ordering thing, because also even the Mystic Mine, why would you get rid of it to activate a storm to clear monsters that are already negated by the Mystic Mine? So, I mean, I hoping that Emre maybe did get the experience needed to compete, but he's on 7-1, just one game away from an 8-1 record. So, yeah. can't blame him, and he's at least guaranteed to go first in one of the remaining games, which is always a great feeling, especially, especially when side decking a card like RP Feather Storm, which is ridiculous at going first. So that card is one of the most unfair cards I've ever read, and he's playing Trap Trick to search it. So a lot of consistency in there. So. Without uh, though, uh, getting too much into a game we have not seen uh, yet, in game two, we can presume Philip is going to go first. Yeah. Probably side in uh, quite a few options, I would say, because Double Cross, uh, Veiler, and Cosmic are all really good generic cards, which I think make his deck significantly better. You probably side out the Bestials uh, or uh, even the Schoolmeister, which is another tech that he's playing. And I think you're good to go. Yeah, it's quite a few options against Flow and Race, which is very annoying to play against, especially yeah. in this situation. And also having cards such as Effect Veilers, and I think it can really make the difference in this matchup. On For the sure. other hand, I think uh, Emre's side deck is very standard, I would say. Like we have seen Diego's yeah. as well playing uh, like this lineup. Maybe a Spice we will soon see. <laughs> yeah, there are a few interesting cards, but as already mentioned, and as we saw in game one, Emre's deck is really, really, really well prepared for going second. So, our players have side decked and are ready. So, without further ado, let's go to game two of round nine.
And here they are. So Philip uh, most likely gonna go first, uh, trying to set up uh, a threatening board and hopefully not get shifted. But uh, let's see if that's the case. He wants to prioritize totally awesome. Uh, I already see an impermanence, I think, uh, which is yeah. great in this matchup. Uh, but unfortunately, the Limbrel Angler, which you really want to send uh, from deck to graveyard. But the rest of his hand looks solid. The uh, Sprite Blue getting the jet. Uh, it's tough. We have seen plenty of time already in the past. Here we might get the starter, I think, instead of the smashers. Yeah. And yeah, this is the case. We get to the starter, and now we can prioritize either carrot or red, depending on the end. Uh, I see him permanent. Oh, he already has the smasher. Yeah, I think he has talent. It. Or either talent uh, or. Uh, yeah, it has to I be. I think it talent. is the one copy of yeah. talent. So, very good end. Definitely, definitely better than before. But once again, if he doesn't go for the toad play, he could be punished a lot. Yeah. So let's see. I would be surprised if that wasn't the case. I think here what you do is gigantic. And he doesn't go for it right away. Wow. Instead, the prioritizes uh, this line. Interesting. Uh, I actually don't mind it, uh, this way you can basically go for the Gene Buster, then send the second copy of Nimbler, and you still are able to go for Gigantic. So I think this is actually pretty nice. So I'm thinking that you can go Gigantic, uh, then get the Swap, uh, send another Swap, and then go Toad yeah. plus Gene Buster, right? So the play should be Toad plus uh, Gene Buster. Let's see if I'm right. Uh, you get the Swap Frog, uh, and yeah. This is the line, uh, so totally awesome. Gene Buster plus uh, Smashers uh, seems like uh, the dream end uh, alongside an impermanence as well. Uh, it's gonna be an upfield battle here for Emre. Let's see if he can break this board just like he did in game one. But it's definitely tougher. A very good stop from Philip, which uh, is showing us uh, the power of uh, his pride deck, uh, which. Uh, <laughs> Put him on this 7-1 record yep. and here with the smasher and impermanence as well. What an opening by Philip. Surprised that he picked uh, uh, an unusual zone for the impermanence. Usually I would always pick the middle just because he's the most likely to get the tricky one plus one. But now let's see, we could have a quick one on our end if Emery doesn't have a good end. This game is simply lost. Of course, once again, we are actually going to see the totally. Wow. Ooh. So he's playing three copies of okay. uh, Swap, uh, I believe. Yeah. Yep, he does. That's actually quite surprising. I would say you usually see two uh, often. But, I mean, it's working out for him. So we see again Pot of Prosperity. Great way to start things off. Uh, and now you got to consider it uh, just like before because... Uh, Dark Ruler is there. So if you don't uh, negate and then Dark Ruler comes down, uh, you have to negate, you have it, to negate yeah. it. He does, and he's of course gonna set it. Uh, and by the way, I think it's the first time in my life that both players are using the same sleeves and it's not white, but it's purple. I think literally the first time I've ever <laughs> seen something like this, but. Hopefully they will remember about this prosperity later on in the duel. Uh, okay, so map is next. I think uh, we might see a Smashers uh, being used on it. Yep. And that is the case. Smashers activating on the map makes sense. You want to get rid of it as soon as possible. And Emre is considering whether he wants to change something to this masher. He goes for a random cosmic on the other face down. And it is the impermanence. Good hit. But I think this is still problematic. You have to get rid of the gene plus the elf, which can get back the totally awesome from the graveyard. So this is tough. 
Yeah, now he goes for Robina, but the Jin is going to be chained. Yeah, and, he uh, negates it. Uh, but there yeah. is an answer here by Emre. Which, by the way, also makes sure that the Elf cannot use the effect to bring back the Toad. But differently from Impermanence, Veiler and this kind of cards, uh, the Jin doesn't require the monster to be on yeah. the field. Uh, and that's why I think uh, his opponent picks up his card. He has seen enough. Uh, we have a very quick game two and it is 1-1. One, one. We're going to game three. What? There is to say, I'm not too sure we had a really impressive opening. If any of you guys were skeptic about the Sprite, and especially pure Sprite going into this event, I think Philip is giving you a pretty good lesson on how to pilot this deck. With what looked like an underwhelming opening, he showed us that pretty much any normal summon plus blue gets you to totally plus Gene Buster, which is huge i mean uh, start with that starting hand basically had on the line the total it is measured in permanence then the gene so yeah. four negations and then with the <laughs> alpha another neg so five negations that's so. that's way too much you get it back <laughs> with that you get back the totally yeah it's it's way too much to just fight back uh, and the only hope probably would have been again the dark ruler all the ultimate slayer which by yeah. the way was in his deck as well unfortunately we have not seen the card it's uh, not the uh, most popular option this weekend uh, but now again as we were mentioning already for you guys uh, the situation is completely on the opposite yeah it is emre who is going first uh, trying to set up his flow under his play we'll have a hard time doing so because he's facing uh, you know a lot of impermanence and veilers and ash so a lot of end traps but at the same time, yes, RP, Feather, Storm, and that is the peak card of the deck. He will try his best to get his hand on and probably even try to fish it with Prosperity if he opens it for the third time in a row. His opponent, on the other end, is going to side the, the same cards, but he has the Gamma, which going second. We know how much I love it and just how strong of a card that is, even against Flow Wanderers. Our players are ready. Let's find out who will be the winner of round nine and advances with an 8 1 record. And here they are. This is the last game of the day. So hold on tight and keep watching. You don't want to miss the ending for this event. Uh, at least uh, day one. Let's see if Emre can pull this off. Uh, gonna look at these five cars. Uh, and he does open up with a terraforming, which is a great way to start things off. Uh, getting Deathflow Wanderers and the Magnificent map. You really get things going easily. And any of the Fluanderies monster really pushes this end to a next level. Let's see if he has any of that going on for him. He goes and activates the effect. Uh, no response from Philip. Uh, which one is it? We can't quite tell yet. But the impermanence coming down from Philip, uh, trying to shut things down. Uh, it unfortunately isn't enough because the map grants you an additional Ooh. summon, but there is the Ash Blossom also on top Ash. of it. Wow. Both cards already activated and plays back to Philip. Let's pay attention. The only line of defense left is the map because whenever Philip is gonna normal summon, the map will trigger. Does he have a cosmic to clear it? He doesn't, but he has Sprite Starter, which is the best way to prevent the map. This is looking <laughs> awful for Embry. Wow. I think that Philip was really hoping for uh, this kind of start in game three. Uh, like, I think the starter is the better one to go for at this point. Um, honestly, uh, like, there was not that much that Emre could have done. Uh, like, with these two impermanence and Ash Blossom being activated now. This is just the dream end. Uh, and honestly, even the starter to top things off and the jet. Wow. 
This is uh, really getting out of hand. You can see Emre having uh, a little laugh at it. What can you even do when your opponent opens this well? Because, to be fair, although Ash plus impermanence were great, uh, the only card was yeah. the starter. Because exactly. you stop uh, the map and uh, you are able to just uh, continue playing. Yeah, but I mean, this was the dream end from Philip, honestly. Yeah. You could have asked for better. Yeah. And now, of course, uh, we are gonna see, just like before, uh, the same combos with most likely sending the Nimble from the deck to the graveyard. Uh, and yeah, this is uh, happening uh, as expected. Uh, great stuff uh, from Philip. Uh, and here comes the two beavers being special summoned and then we will soon see the gigantic play and then the elf with the totally awesome here comes the gigantic <sighs> nothing that emra can do basically yeah really really solid stuff uh, by philip uh, and uh, what can we say we already mentioned it in the previous round uh, between Federico and Christopher. Sometimes it is your day or your game, and uh, it seems as if uh, Emre really showed uh, why he's uh, doing this well uh, in game one. Uh, uh, now this game three is completely shifted toward his opponent. Uh, and uh, the reason why I'm worried uh, is also because when you go first, you tend to side out the cards like Dark Ruler and uh, then, uh, if your opponent uh, gets a hang on you, it's tough to fight back. And I think it is the most uh, um, amount of times we have seen this Jin uh, Buster <laughs> hitting the field. Uh, Philip really prioritizing and knowing how good of a card that is in this matchup. And uh, we're gonna see again uh, Jin Buster plus totally awesome going second, which is. So good, but ooh, a little ooh. misstep here by Philip. Actually, he doesn't. Uh, wow, he does link with it, and this is huge. Uh, a huge misstep here by Philip, sending the swap uh, at the very last second. He is now forced to not go for totally awesome. Might not matter, but you can see Philip shaking his head. Uh, he went for the totally, and at the very last second, he forgot uh, he needed to link with the Nimble Beaver. Let's hope this doesn't cost him the game. Uh, and let's see, Emre picks up his card. Uh, really thinking how to get out of this weird situation but what a ending for this day one we are gonna draw some additional cards uh, with the effect uh, would you use this measure uh i mean you do smell the weakness uh, but i don't think i would bite uh, into it uh, he revealed the card puts one back draw one Again, uh, I really want to save it for the field spell. And there it is, Ultimate Slayer going first, uh, being kept in the deck. Uh, wow. Why not? <laughs> I mean, working out uh, for Emre. This is good. About Emre, I think, as a two cars in end now yeah philip could chain the smashers and then chain the alpha yeah because you cannot respond directly to slayer with uh, monster effects but he is considering it uh might not be interested in uh, going for it and he does so he goes uh, as expected for smashers uh, most likely gonna get rid of the map uh, and he's gonna chain the elf uh, to the effect uh, So Elf should resolve first, summoning something back from the graveyard. Which uh, could be the Pixie. Let's see. Yeah, it makes yeah. sense uh, for me to get the Pixie. So Pixie coming back, then it is Meshers resolving and 
getting rid of the map. And now uh, we are actually surprisingly gonna see uh, one other card because I thought he was gonna send the evil twins. Yeah, me too. But instead, yeah. uh, he sent the tri brigade, right? Yeah. To just try and draw a card that's useful at the moment. But I don't see how you fight back against two monster negations. Wow. Yeah, usually you get to send the evil twin. Instead, he sent the Fergit, but it's... Uh, oh, he has another one. But I think uh, he has another Ultimate Slayer, which is not uh, once per turn. <laughs> so he has a second Ultimate Slayer, not once per turn. Uh, he can use it. Uh, and this is actually churning out. Uh, you can see Philip shaking his head. Uh, if only he had the Totally Awesome, maybe this could be different. Uh, wow. What a pickup by Emre really trying to figure out this line and this is huge because now he has the face up continuous spell he can get rid of the red <laughs> what a turn of events really <laughs> it seems as if the game and the match was over but suddenly it's emre on the driving seat because he now can use his continuous to tribute the red Let's see if he figures it out uh, or he gets rid of the pixies right away. He's gonna ask uh, for his effect. Uh, gets rid of the red, uh, summon the Ampen, and now he's back to activating his cards. Wow. And there is the fist bump. Wow. Really? What a shock uh, at the very end. Wow, what a match and what a way to end this one. I mean, Crazy. we were not expecting it, actually, yeah. I mean, looked like it. Philip had it, basically. Absolutely. He, had, he opened up with Impermanence and Ash Blossom, and then he had the starter, which was, like, the best card to open with because of the map on the field. And then that slight, not slight, but, like, that mistake cost him the game, you know, sending the Swap Frog before the Link Summon, and the Totally Awesome could have changed the game entirely. What a crazy match, to be fair. Game one, we saw why Emre is now on eight wins and one loss. His great record walking back. And that was absolutely great, great Yu-Gi-Oh! Everyone in this last future match for the day showed up incredibly. But in the very end, when Ope Sim lost and when Emre was about to sign, a metaphorical sleep. <laughs> he fight hard, used the second copy of Ultimate Slayer to go for, you know, this uh, kind of a draw a card, one last card, just like in an anime. And he, peel, he pulled it off with the Empen plus the final options. <laughs> What can we say? It really doesn't get more climatic than this. Uh, congratulations to both, uh, but it is Emre who will advance with an X1 record. Uh, but guys, uh, just as a final reminder, thank you for being with us and thank you for having watched. Uh, this was the last match for day one of YCS Dorman 2022. As a final reminder, we went through nine rounds of Swiss. Uh, tomorrow, we will be back at 9 a.m. CET. So make sure to tune in tomorrow at 9 a.m. CET for round 10. We will go through the last three rounds of Swiss before joining top 64 and finding out later on in the day who will be the winner of YCS Dorman. This has been a blast. Thank you from me and Alberto. Thank you one last time. Stay with us and see you tomorrow. 9 a.m. CET. Don't miss any of the action. Have a good night and see you tomorrow.